Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to be answering the question, what is an allele and how is it different from a gene? Before we launch into that, I want to remind you that you can get a final picture of the board with all the notes filled in for study purposes for free by clicking on the tiny URL in the description below. So make sure you get your free PDF for study purposes. Um, and also remember to subscribe. So let's go ahead and get started. Alleles versus genes. First, I'm gonna talk about alleles, what they are um, compared to genes, and then I'm gonna throw in a little bit of a discussion about homozygotes versus heterozygotes and dominant versus recessive for those who need it. So let's go ahead and get started by talking about what a gene is. Now, a gene is a segment of DNA that codes for a specific trait. So imagine your DNA, it's this, you know, these, these huge chromosomes that are very, very long sequences of nucleotides. Remember those letters, A, T, C, G, that's adenine, thymine, cytosine, guanine. And there are, you know, segments, like just discrete units of the DNA that code for a specific trait. That's what we call a gene. Now, how does it code for a specific trait? What is that mechanism? Well, the DNA, the genes, are the templates for either proteins or functional strips of RNA. So I think students are generally pretty familiar with messenger RNA, transfer RNA, ribosomal RNA, that's the mRNA, tRNA, and rRNA that you learn about when you learn about transcription and translation. But there are a lot of other types of, of RNA that have many different functions, um, particularly regulatory functions. So things like link RNA, uh, micro RNAs, um, snRNAs, um, siRNAs. So if you want to learn more about that, I've got a video called um, Regulatory RNAs that goes into more detail on those different types of RNA. Now let's get on to the reason I think most of you are here, and that is what is an allele and how is it different from a gene? Well, an allele is an alternative version of a gene. So for example, if you've learned about the work of Gregor Mendel working with his pea plants, you'll remember that he was looking at the flower color gene. Of course, Mendel didn't know what DNA was and he didn't have the word for gene. But he was looking at the, the sort of the flower color character and saw that there were, there were alternative versions. The, the pea plants could have white petals or they could have purple petals. And now we, in the 21st century, have the benefit of a lot more knowledge than Gregor Mendel. And we know that the flower color gene comes with two different versions. So the, the, um, the gene can either be coding for a white petal color or a purple petal color, depending on the specific sequence of nucleotides that were inherited by that plant from its parents. Uh, another example, if you want a human example, is for tasting the chemical PTC. So PTC is a, a chemical that some people, when they taste it, it tastes you know, horribly bitter because they have the allele for tasting. Um, or there's also a non-taster allele. So a person who has non-taster alleles can touch that PTC to their tongue and not taste anything really. So that's another example of alternative versions of a gene. Now I want you to be aware that in sexually reproducing species, um, like humans, for example, individuals are going to have usually two copies, right? There are some plants that will get more, more than two copies, but generally, um, if we think about humans and other animals, um, individuals are going to have two copies each of those copies being an allele, so two alleles for each gene, one from each parent. So um, a person, if you go back to this PTC example, can get you know, a taster allele from both parents or a non-taster allele from both parents or can get a taster allele from one parent and a non-taster allele from their other parent. So um, in most cases, 
individuals have two copies or two alleles for a gene. If the individual has two of the same allele, so for example, two of the taster alleles, let's say, or, or a pea plant who has two uh, white alleles, that is known as being a homozygote. So a homozygote or a homozygous individual, speaking specifically about that locus, right? Because when you have uh, you know, thousands of genes, you can be homozygous at some and, and not at others, basically. If the individual has two different alleles, for a given gene, that is called being a heterozygote. So again, if we go back to our example with the pea plants, with the flower color gene, you could have plants that are homozygous for you know, having two of the purple alleles for the flower color gene, but then be heterozygous for some other gene, say for um, you know, seed color or seed texture or plant height. So, the homozygous and heterozygous descriptors um, are going to be just talking about whether the alleles are the same or different at a specific locus, so, so for a specific gene. Um, now let's talk a little bit about dominant and recessive. So some alleles that are called dominant alleles can mask other alleles, and the alleles that get masked are called recessive alleles. Now I want you to understand that this is kind of an oversimplification. Like yes, there are traits, there are alleles that are dominant and they completely will mask a recessive allele. But not all traits are that simple. You can have examples where there are, you know, alleles that are co-dominant with each other or where there's kind of um, an incomplete dominance and like a blending sort of effect. And so this is, you know, true for cer certainly for, for many genes, but not true for all. And I just want to give some examples here. If you have, we're talking about pea plants again, pea plant that has two dominant, so I've used capital letter P here, two dominant alleles, homozygous, meaning two of the same, and they're dominant, this is going to result in a purple flower color. Um, if a pea plant is heterozygous at that flower color uh, locus, meaning that there's one dominant allele and one recessive allele. Well, the dominant allele totally masks the recessive and you only see the color that comes from that dominant allele, and that is purple. So you see there are two different um, types of alleles um, that give the same what we call a uh, phenotype. So the color here, the purple, that is, I'm going to put that in parentheses over here, phenotype is what you see, what you observe, whereas, I'm going to put it in parentheses over here, genotype is the specific combination of alleles that results in that phenotype. Now, if you have a pea plant that has only two of the recessive, and there's no dominant around to give that purple color, these would be homozygous, remember homozygous, two of the same allele, and it happens to be in this case the recessive allele, and so these will be white. And so that shows you that that recessive color only comes out when there's no dominant allele to mask it. So I know that was a lot. I have a playlist on Mendelian genetics. It has six videos in it, that's it, just six videos. These six videos together have about half a million views. So please check that out if you're studying Mendelian genetics. You can learn about Punnett squares with monohybrid crosses and dihybrid crosses. You can learn about a test cross and you can review three major laws from the work of Gregor Mendel, his law of dominance, his law of segregation, and his law of independent assortment. These last two, number five and six here, I believe that they're both approaching 200,000 views just on their own. So definitely check those out. Remember that you can get a free PDF of the board notes by going to the tiny URL in the description below. Make sure you subscribe and thank you for watching. Join me next time for more biology study videos. And until then, good luck with your studying.